Hey guys, it's Mr. Alex FPV here, and today I'm going to be solving a little issue that a few people seem to be having. Uh, this new Spectrum FPV Racing Diversity Receiver is a great receiver, and I have to give a shout out to Spectrum for finally getting a receiver that's, I, in my opinion, better than the uh, FR Skyline. Uh, the 11 millisecond frame rate is just amazing, and it's super responsive, but the downside to this receiver is it's these antennas right here and they're very weak. You break these antennas, it actually really messes up this whole receiver. And I've fortunately had to fix this problem. Today I have a solution. I have a brand new Spectrum receiver here. And I'm actually going to be modding this on my quadcopter so it's very durable. And I found that this way that I do it seems to make the durability just so great. And it only takes about 10 minutes to do this and it seems to last for a long time. So a few materials you're gonna need for this. You're going to need uh, a thin piece of heat shrink, uh, just like, I don't know exactly what size it is, I'll have it down in the description. You're going to need a thicker piece of heat shrink, and then you're going to need two zip ties. And basically, to, just to explain this for you guys, the two zip ties are going to be used to um, hook the, uh, you're going to hook your antenna to these with some heat shrink, and basically, it's just going to give the antenna something rigid to put against, and don't worry, it does not affect anything with the transmission of the receiver or anything like that. So it's all good and same with the heat shrink and then you're going to basically heat shrink this to your standoff on your quad and if you're not using standoffs you can simply just use this normal heat shrink technique that I'm going to show you and just have it mounted in any way you want. The whole point of this is to make this receiver as durable as simply possible so you don't have to buy new receivers or you don't have to find aftermarket antennas to fix this. So. I'm going to go ahead and show you how I install it on my quad. Like I said, I've done this before, so okay, let's guys. get So this is going to be the installation portion of this video. I'm going to be mounting this on my X-Hover uh, MXP200B, and I'm going to be mounting it to these standoffs right here. So very simple process, and I'll just show you how to do it right the now. first thing you want to do is you want to take this end of the zip tie off where you actually would put the zip tie through. You want to take a pair of side cutters and or a knife or something that cuts this and you just want to simply cut that off. And also, this isn't totally necessary, but I don't like this extra portion right here. I don't think that I need it. So I just cut that off too. And we're going to be measuring this down in the future. So go ahead and repeat this process two times with your other zip tie. Okay, guys, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take our standoffs and we're going to measure how long we need our zip tie to be. Uh, generally, I like to keep the zip tie just slightly above where the standoff would be, and that's so your actual receiver wire itself will be mounted to this and it's actually mounted above the frame. Depending on the length of your receiver, whether you're using this Spectrum receiver or an FR Sky receiver or whatever receiver you're using, this will depend. But for the MXP200B, I just start here at the bottom and in fact, just the way this, this is just a small zip tie right now. Uh, in fact, we're just gonna try and leave it the way it is. I'm gonna cut this just a little bit down and then I'm gonna do the uh, same thing for the other zip tie. So I'm gonna take this, I'm just gonna kind of guesstimate here. I'm gonna take, eh, it's probably a half an inch or so off, just like that. And then I'm gonna take my other zip tie. I'm just gonna line it and we'll just cut them just like that. So that's how we do that part and now we're going to be taking the heat shrink and we're actually going to start heat shrinking this. So for this step you're going to need a heat gun so I'm going to grab my heat gun over here. What we're going to do now is we're going to measure out how much heat shrink that we need. Generally I take the heat shrink and I usually just make it to where the heat shrink goes just past the end point of the, rec of the uh, receiver antenna and that kind of gives it an extra layer of protection so as you can see here it's just about the same. And then I generally, it doesn't need to go all the way down because these receivers, you're not going to break this part here. The part that we're trying to protect here is just this little piece right here. So I only need about half of this. So this is why we only need one of these. So we're just going to take this. We're just going to kind of guess. We're going to just cut that in half. So now we have two. That one's actually quite a bit longer than that other one, but it's okay. So we'll just cut them the same length. And we're going to take this piece of heat shrink here and we're just going to test fit this. So you don't want to heat shrink this just yet, but we're going to take this, we're going to slide it over the antenna. And as you can see, you can't see the other end of the antenna. If I push this forward, you obviously can see it. But the whole goal is to keep the antenna unexposed from the environment. And it should look something just like this. So 
go ahead and test fit the other side, the other piece of heat shrink to the other antenna, and then we are going to move on to our next step. Okay, so we're going to actually take this heat shrink now, we're going to take one of our zip ties, and we're just going to put this on. Just slide the zip tie down the piece of heat shrink until you have the zip tie hanging down the bottom, and then just a little bit of the zip tie is above the heat shrink. And you want to take this, and it might be a little bit of a tight fit depending on your heat shrink, but you want to take your antenna wire and you want to just find a little gap and you want to slowly, making sure that your zip tie doesn't poke out, slowly run the wire up the heat shrink until none of the wire is exposed. And then obviously, like I just said, make sure that your zip tie is not exposing and it'll be something just like that. So you, the goal is to have some of the zip tie exposed down here, but none at the top and make sure that your whole receiver wire is internal in this piece of heat shrink. And once you do that, you wanna repeat this process on the other so side. So now we're gonna take our heat gun, and while I'm heat shrinking this, I'm making sure that the zip tie is not exposed on the outer end because that's just excess drag that you don't need. I wanna make sure that that portion of the antenna I showed you earlier is completely in the heat shrink. That way it's protected. That's the whole goal of what we're doing here. Once I know that all this is done, I'm gonna take my heat gun, I'm gonna hold my receiver, and that is that right there. So what we've done it, and by the way, if this slides just a little bit, like this one's pretty firm, this one's pretty firm. As you can see, I kind of, if you can zoom in there, I kind of left a little bit of the uh, antenna exposed. Having a little bit extra just showing isn't a big deal because that's actually gonna be protected. The most crucial part of this is you wanna make sure that you don't have any exposed on this end. We're gonna move on to the next step, which is actually heat shrinking this to the standoffs. We're gonna take the bigger piece of heat shrink, I'll, and again, I'll have this in the description of what size this is, but you really just need one piece. I got this at home. We're gonna take this, and we're gonna put it against our standoff. You want it to go just about to the bottom, and then you don't want it to go past, obviously, the top of the carbon plate, so you just wanna measure that out, and it's just below half for this frame. So I'm gonna take that, I'm gonna take some side cutters or a knife or whatever you have. You're just gonna cut that off and then take the other piece that you just cut and you just wanna make it the exact same length. And now you have two pieces. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're actually gonna need to expand this heat shrink. This is personal preference and if you have the right heat shrink that's just a little bit bigger than this, you won't need to do this. What I've done is I've taken those two pieces of heat shrink and they look kind of ugly. Right now they're kind of swollen if I can show it in the camera. What I did was I took a pair of long needle nose pliers and I stuck it up the heat shrink and I just physically expanded it. Start by putting this piece of heat shrink over it, just like that. It's going to want to fall off now because it's a lot bigger. And we're going to take the antenna wire, just one, one side at a time, and we're going to put it up there. And it's going to come out the other end and you just want to slightly pull on it. And if you see the part of the zip, the extra part of the zip tie that we had earlier, you want to make it until the zip, that part of the zip tie is just into the heat shrink right there. And then voila, you have your antenna is now up here, but it's protected in the heat shrink and it's with a zip tie now. So this is actually really rigid now and it's not going to break anytime soon. So once you have this all set, make sure your, your thick piece of heat shrink is all as far up on the standoff as it can go. Uh, if you really want to do this correctly, you would want to take the screw out, you want to put the stand, take the standoff off, but in this case, it's like a half a centimeter difference and it's not going to be a big deal. And so once you have it ready, you're just going to take this and you're going to take the heat gun. And there we have it. So we have our antenna up there. And if this is, again, slightly loose, it's no problem. Just keep heat shrinking it. And in fact, you don't even need to do this step. You can simply take your antennas and do the heat shrink and zip tie method and then just zip tie this to the standoff and it's easier to take off in the future or you can actually just put a piece of tape around this which works just as well any type of way and we're going to repeat this step on the other side and then I'm actually going to show you how I mounted this on my MXP 200. Okay guys so this is how I have it mounted uh, basically what I do is I have a Cricut V2 uh, 200 milliwatt transmitter on here and I take that and I put it up against the carbon fiber so I can still access everything here I can see what channel I'm on and then I take my spectrum receiver and I just zip tie it to the bottom of that with the flat portion uh, on the bottom I'd highly recommend making sure everything is on there first and also you don't even have to fully heat shrink this because it's still very durable and once this is mounted on your quad it's actually the heat shrink can't physically go anywhere thank you guys for watching this video uh, make sure you subscribe comment like the video 
tell your friends about it, you know, anything to spread my channel, and uh, hopefully in the future, I'm going to do some more how-to videos. Uh, I'm just learning from my mistakes, so this is just a really good tip that was recommended to me by a few people on Facebook. Hope this helps you guys, so thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.